Hey, what's up guys? It's Chenzo. I put together a little how-to video on how to resin some wood art pieces. Hope you dig it. Um, here's some of the supplies I'm using. Uh, this is going to be a 20 by 40 fold and half table that I got from Walmart. I use this thing around the studio all the time. It comes in perfect handy. Um, the best use I've got out of it is from building this custom uh, little DIY enclosure for curing your resin. I'm going to show you how I do that here in just a second. Um, so these are some of the tools I'm going to be using. I just use little plastic cups, uh, plastic knives, some of these little spreaders. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but you can get them at Walmart. And then I use a little heat gun that I got from uh, Michael's. The, uh, the resin I'm using here is from artresin.com. Go to their website and... Uh, they got all the specifics if you have any more questions. I usually just, oh yeah, you also need a lot of plastic, big sheet of plastic. Um, if you go to their website, they have more info on, uh, or a calculation on how much you need for each project, but I kind of just, uh, kind of just eyeball it. And I'm going through the motions here. I've already mixed up my resin, but I had some issues with my camera, so I had to go back and shoot that. But it's basically, um, you mix equal parts hardener to equal parts resin. Stir it for about three minutes um, to make sure it's evenly stirred, and then it's ready to pour. I think at that point you have about 45 minutes to work with it. And here I'm just setting up my DIY custom enclosure. Um, I'm using the table. I spread the legs only about halfway. They actually extend uh, further, but this is the half their length that they extend and it's perfect for a little resin enclosure. Then I just pop some uh, recycled plastic over the top. I got this plastic from work. I, uh, it's, um, it's an equipment cover, but I, uh, I reuse it, so I take it home with me after we're done using it, and uh, it's perfect for this project. But you can use like a trash bag or you know any leftover scrap plastic that you have laying around works fine. Yeah, and I just, it's basically a big bag. I just cut a little slit so that, uh, so I have a little opening. And I always use these same paint buckets because they're, they're pretty level. As long as what I'm putting on top of them is level, um, then they're level as well. And throwing in some uh, supplies that I forgot to mention. I'm going to use some gloves. Um, you might need an extension cord if uh, your outlet's a little far away. Ready to go, just getting everything set. You might also want to use a level just to make sure everything is perfectly um, level before you start pouring. And I just start off kind of in the center, try to get a nice even pour, um, then spread it out just nice and smooth. One thing I will mention is I use a fixative on this wood, um, so I would recommend putting your fixative or spraying your fixative if you're using pastels or map color or a colored pencil or something like that. I would recommend uh, maybe leaving at least 24 hours in between the time you spray your fixative to the time you actually pour your resin. On this particular piece, I uh, I... I want to say I sprayed the fixative about two hours before, and I think that's why I ended up with a few gaps here and there where it came out unevenly. And I'll show, I'll talk to you more about that once uh, you see the final product. But um, uh, just just a little tip I would say is maybe spray your fixative at least the day before, and then come back and resin it for a better result. But you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. I'm um, doing the top sections first, trying to get everything nice and even and smooth. Um, being careful not to drop any hair or anything like that. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to get all the grooves uh, in the in the sides of the piece, you know, where the bark is exposed. Um, this adds a really, really nice touch at the end. And I would definitely recommend saving that piece for last because the technique I'm using is... I'm just putting some resin inside the grooves and letting them drip down and I'm actually catching it as it drips and then putting it back into the bark. If you do it the other way around, 
um, you risk getting some bark uh, into your cup and then if you were to put that same resin on the top of your piece you can you know contaminate it um, and end up with little spots of bark and dust and stuff like that so I would definitely save this piece for the end So everything is going smooth so far. This is actually the first time I've resin these little wood slabs, so I didn't know really what to expect. Didn't have much of a game plan for this uh, for the side pieces, um, but they're coming along pretty smooth. I'm just kind of grabbing some resin and just putting it on there by hand. It takes a little bit of patience, but this is actually um, one of the parts that really can draw your eye to the piece because the way the um, those cracks and those grooves grab the light. It just looks really nice. So it's worth taking the extra time to make sure to get this right. Okay, I should be just about done. Um, once I'm done with this, the last thing I do is I kind of find a good area inside the enclosure to put them to where they're um, least likely to touch any of the plastic. You know, if the wind or something grabs it, a piece of plastic happens to touch the piece, it's going to stick. So I have mine in my garage with my door closed, so there's no wind, um, but I still keep them as far as I can from uh, the, the plastic edge. And it looks like now I'm just setting up to... Uh, get all the bubbles out and like I said this is just a cheap little gun that I got from Michaels um, if you're doing bigger projects you definitely would want to invest in a torch of some kind um, I tried using this gun on my first canvas that I did last week and uh, it did not get the job done so well there's a few bubbles left behind I couldn't get them all out and it took forever so I definitely get a bigger torch um, if you're doing bigger projects but for these smaller ones it worked out just fine And this is a pretty important step too. You want to make sure you get all the bubbles out. Just work it over a few times. I'm kind of going back and forth on these pieces just to make sure all the bubbles are out. And one thing I would mention as well, um, I've poured resin in slightly colder weather um, and I've had not so great results with that. So I would definitely um, encourage you to wait till it kind of warms up. Uh, I think on this particular day, I was probably like 70 degrees outside. Um, in colder weather, it's just you get a lot more bubbles and it's harder to work with. So once it's done, just cover it up. Uh, come back 24 hours and this is what it looked like. Sorry about the camera angle. I'm, I always forget to turn my phone camera over whenever I do this. So at first glance, it looks pretty good. But if you notice there towards the edge and towards the bottom, there's some spots that just didn't fill in for some reason um, at this point I'm kind of blaming this on the fixative because I know when I left it everything was smooth and even and every piece was covered so right now I'm thinking that there may have been some reaction with the fixative and I um, I experimented a little bit with this uh, later on a few different projects and the times and you can see I got kind of the same same thing going on here at the top of this piece but I experimented with it, um, like I said, waiting at least 24 hours after spraying a fixative, and I got much better results. So these pieces I'm going to actually resin again, and I'll show you the, the final product of that. I, I didn't film the second resin. It's basically the same process, but it actually came out a lot smoother uh, the second time around. Here we go. I uh, resin them a second time, and this is the uh, this is how they looked afterwards. 
I came out nice and smooth, just nice and glassy, no bubbles. Um, it pretty much came out perfect the second time around. It sucked that I had to do it, you know, twice and wait another 24 hours, but it was definitely um, worth it. Cool. Um, so that should do it. I hope you guys dig it. Um, if you like this video, please help me out. I just, uh, you know, new account, so uh, I'm looking for likes. And if uh, you dig it and you're looking for more, hit subscribe. I'm trying to put out some more how-to videos and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. Peace.